Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Let's crochet something beautiful today. Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me. I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the cozy latte mittens and those are these mittens right here. They are made with one Karen latte cake. Now you won't use the entire cake, you'll use about half or three quarters I should say of the Karen latte cake. And the Karen latte yarn, it's a blended yarn and it has uh, this beautiful kind of soft uh, hairy look to it. It really is buttery smooth to wear. It's so so comfortable. So I've designed this easy to make pair of mittens. Now this pair of mittens is part of a set that I've made including a puff stitch hat and a ribbed button-up cowl. You can find all of these patterns written and video tutorials for free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Also please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, there you will also find video tutorials for these items. All of the links can be found in the notes for this video. So for our project today, the Cozy Latte Mittens, you are going to need one Karen Latte cake, which is this right here. Again, you won't use all of it. You will also need a stitch marker, a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a measuring tape, and a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. Now that we have all of our materials together, let's get now, started. Now one quick note as we begin, I did cut my cake in certain places so that if you take a look at my mittens here so that the cuffs and the two mittens matched. Otherwise, if you just, uh, you're welcome to, but if you continue just to work the cake as the colors fall, then your mittens may not come out with the same color um, coordination and pattern. So I did cut my yarn in places to make sure that my cuffs and the rest of the mitten did match. So to begin this project, we are going to start by crocheting the cuff. And the cuff is done in a simple slip stitch ribbing, which I will show you. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to make your slip knot. And you are going to start by chaining 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Once you have chained 11, you will slip stitch in the second chain from hook. So this is the first chain. This is the second chain. I'm going to insert my hook. I'm going to drop a loop and draw it through the loop on my hook. That is a slip stitch. So you're going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you will have a total of 11, uh, 10 stitches. Slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. Once you come to the end of your row, you will chain one and turn. Now working in the back loop only, you will once again slip stitch in each stitch across. To work in the back loop only, you're going to skip your, this is my chain one, I'm going to skip that. To work in the back loop only, if you take a look at the top of your work, you will see these little V's here. To slip the stitch in the back loop only, you are only going to be working under one of these loops. And it's the one that's furthest away from you. So you're going to insert your hook under that one loop and work a slip stitch as you would. Just like that. And you're going to continue working in the back loop only all the way across your work. Again, you will have uh, 10 stitches once you come to the end of your row in the back loop only. So I'm only going under one loop there. All the way 
across. Okay. Now for the rest of your cuff, you are going to repeat that row. Chain one, turn, working in the back loop only, slip stitch in each stitch across. You are going to repeat that row until the ribbing or the cuff of your mitten measures about seven inches. Okay, so you are going to continue slip stitching in each stitch in the back loop only all the way across until your work measures seven inches. To measure your work, you're simply going to lay your work flat. I don't have much done here. And then you will take your measuring tape and simply measure. You don't want to stretch it or anything like that. This will stretch quite a bit um, when you finish, but that will give you a nice snug cuff on your mitten. So you're going to work until your uh, cuff reaches seven inches. And then meet me back here and we'll go over the next step. Okay, so now once you have finished crocheting, until your cuff measures seven inches, such as mine does here, and if you take it, take a look at it, you can see it does stretch quite a bit. It's going to give you a nice snug cuff. Okay, you are, once you've completed seven inches, you're not going to fasten off. What you're going to do is you want to sew the seam of your cuff. So you're going to take your work and you're going to fold it over just like this. Then uh, I always chain one and then turn your work so that the two ends are kind of facing up here and it is kind of hard to see with all the hair but as you get uh, work with the yarn more you'll kind of get used to it and be able to find your way around it. Now what we are going to do to sew the seam of the cup, we are going to working in the back loop only of the one side and the two sides. So working the back loop only of both sides, you are going to slip stitch again all the way across. So I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop of the piece that's closest to me and under the back loop of the one that's furthest away. So you are working through both thicknesses and I'm simply going to slip stitch. And you're going to do that again, back loop of the one closest to me and on the other one, back loop only, slip stitch. Slip stitch all the way across, working through both thicknesses. This one doesn't want to work, there we go. All the way to the end, and again in this row you will have 10 slip stitches. go and one more there we go so once you have slip stitched through both thicknesses all the way across you're going to have this seam you're going to turn your work so that it is right side out just like that so this is now my cuff you should be able to slide your hand in there nicely. It's so super soft if you're using this yarn. You can substitute this uh, yarn also for another of your choice. Once you have your cuff and you've turned it right side out, we are now going to start working around this uh, long edge. Okay, we have not fastened off. What we're going to do is you're going to chain one. From now on you will be working in rounds and for this par first part you will be joining at the end of each round. You are going to chain one, and for this first round, you are going to half double crochet 25 stitches all the way around. And you're going to do this fairly evenly. So the spaces are not 
even uh, nicely marked out. So you're just going to be inserting around this rough edge of your cuff and you want to work 25 half double crochet stitches. For your half double crochet stitch you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, and I like to insert it uh, so that there's a couple of threads. I like to have a nice secure uh, first round. So there's a couple of threads there that I'm just inserting my hook under. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. You'll yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and that's your first half double crochet. So I want 25 of these spread out fairly evenly all the way around the cuff of my mitten. I'm just inserting my hook here um, actually in mostly into the ridges of, uh, of my cuff. So continue working all the way around until you have 25 half double crochet stitches. This is my 25th half double crochet. When you come to the first half double crochet you're going to join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. That is round one. Now for rounds two to five, you are going to chain one. You will not turn your work. You'll always be working in the same direction. You're going to chain one and you're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So that's rounds two to five. So at the end of each round you will have 25 half double crochet stitches. So continue working those and meet me back here. Okay, so I've now worked uh, the rounds two to five, including round one. It's five rounds in total of half double crochet stitches. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to chain one I'm going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way around to the very last stitch. And then in the very last stitch, I'm going to work two half double crochet stitches. So uh, half double crochet all the way around for a total of 24 half double crochet stitches. And then in that final uh, stitch, you will work two half double crochet stitches. So at the end of this round, you will have a total of 26 half double crochet stitches. And coming around to my final stitch. And in this final stitch, I will work two. One and two. That's just going to start to widen your mitten a little bit. It makes it more comfortable and gives your thumb a little bit more space. For a round, uh, and then at the end, sorry, I'm going to join with a slip stitch. For round seven, you are going to repeat that half double crochet in each stitch all the way around to the very last stitch. In the very last stitch you will work two half double crochet stitches for a total of 27 stitches in this round. Now at the end I'm here in my last stitch of round seven. I'm going to work two half double crochet stitches in that final stitch and join with a slip stitch in the first stitch. We will now begin round eight and round eight is where we are going to make our thumb opening. So for round eight you're going to chain one and you're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way around until your final three stitches. When you come to the final three stitches, you're going to pause and you're going to chain two. You're going to skip those last three stitches and then you're going to slip stitch 
in your first stitch. So half double crochet in each stitch all the way around to the last three stitches in this round. Okay, I am almost there. So we come to the one, two, three stitches. When you come to your last three stitches, you're going to stop, you're going to chain two, you're going to skip those three stitches and join in your first stitch with a slip stitch. So you, now you will have a total of 24 half double crochets plus your two uh, chain stitches. For round nine, you are going to half double crochet in each stitch and each chain all the way around. So you will have a total of 26 half double crochet stitches. When you come to your chain two, you will work one half double crochet in each of those chains. And then you will join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. So you can see if you look at your mitten, you're going to have this nice little thumb opening right here. You can even try it on at this point and your mitten is there. These would actually make a very nice pair of fingerless gloves <laughs> if you're uh, looking to make a pair. There you are. Okay, now at this point in my mitten, because I wanted my thumb to be the same color as the main body of my mitten that it was, uh, it was starting to show, I fastened off. I simply cut my thread, cut my yarn, and pulled it through and I fastened off because at this point I wanted to go and work my thumbs so that it would be the same color as the yarn that it was under that was under it. So to do your thumb what you're going to do is you're simply going to insert your hook anywhere around the thumb opening and you are going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. You are then going to work nine half double crochet stitches all the way around that thumb opening. So here's one. And again, the stitches aren't always easy, uh, evenly marked out, so you're just going to insert uh, your hook in a stitch where possible, but sometimes it doesn't fall directly on a stitch. So there's two, three, Four, five, six, seven. Just going to tuck my end in there. You can fasten off your ends if you'd like. And then eight and nine. So work nine half double crochet stitches evenly all the way around and then join in that first stitch with a slip stitch. For the rest of the thumb you are going to repeat that. Chain one for rounds two till eight. Your thumb has a total of eight rounds. You will half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So you will have a total of nine stitches in each round. And you will see that as, uh, as you work, your thumb is gonna get taller and taller here. At the end of each round, you will join in the first stitch with a slip stitch. Okay. 
the way around to the first stitch. Join with a slip stitch in the first stitch and then repeat that. So that was round two, now into round three. Continue to do that for a total of eight rounds and then you can fasten off leaving a long tail. So I am now here at the end of my eighth round on my thumb. What my mitten looks like so far. This is my thumb here. When I come to the end of my eight, eighth round, I'm going to join in the first stitch with a slip stitch. And I'm going to fasten off, leaving a little bit of a long tail. I'm going to use that tail to sew the top of my thumb closed. To sew the top of my thumb closed, I'm going to take my yarn needle. I'm going to turn my mitten inside out. I'm going to pull my long piece of yarn there through. I'm going to thread my needle. And what I did was I simply wove my yarn needle in and out around the top of my thumb. Just wove it in and out around that top round of half double crochet stitches. When I came back to the beginning, I pulled it closed like a drawstring and you can see, just going to pull the top of your mitten closed just like that. And then because I wanted it to be quite secure, I kind of uh, knotted it, fastened it off, uh, kind of like you would in sewing. So I just sewed the top of the mitten closed. Ran it through a couple times because I don't want the thread to come undone as I'm wearing them. Once I felt that it was nice and secure, I just wove my, tucked my end in a little bit and then cut the thread in. You can then turn your mitten back right side out and the thumb of your mitten is now finished. Okay. Now what we are going to want to do is we are going to want to continue working around this top part of the mitten. To do that I am going to join my yarn with a slip stitch in the same place that I fastened off before. So that was right here. I'm going to insert my hook Join my yarn with a slip stitch, just like that. And now I'm just going to do rounds of half double crochet stitches, except this time when I do them, I'm not going to join at the end of each round. Instead, I'm going to use one of my stitch markers. And I am going to always mark the first stitch in my round. So I'll work my first half double crochet stitch. And I will place my stitch marker on that first stitch. So that's how I know where I'm going to be, uh, where I'm going to be starting my rounds. I'm then going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So again, at the end of each round, um, I will have a total of 26 half double crochet stitches. So I'm just working in each stitch all the way around, kind of tucking in my tails here as I go. There we go. As you come around to your stitch marker, as mentioned before, you're not going to join. What you're going to do is briefly remove your stitch marker. You're going to work a half double crochet in that first stitch. 
you may have to pull it a little bit tighter because you don't want there to be a gap here in your opening. So just work a half double crochet, no chain ones, no turning, no joining. Just work a half double crochet in that first stitch. Once again, reattach your stick mar stitch marker and then continue on uh, working your half double crochet stitches all the way around. So for our rounds 11 through 216, a total of six rounds, here you are going to half double crochet in each of these stitches all the way around. Remember you never join, move your stitch marker up as your work progresses and at the end of round 16 you will start the decrease for the top of your mitten. So I've now worked to the end of round 16. I'm back at the, my very first stitch here, which is marked by my stitch marker. I am now going to begin my decrease rows. Now for my decrease rows, what I'm going to do is I am going to remove my stitch marker briefly there. I'm going to half double crochet two together in the first two stitches. So to do that, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch and drop a loop. Yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch, drop a loop. You will have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and draw through all five loops. That's your half double crochet two together. Then I'm going to remark that stitch so I know where my first stitch is. And I'm going to half double crochet in the next 11 stitches. the end of the 11th stitch I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to work one half double crochet stitch over the next two stitch, uh, half double crochet two together over the next two stitches. So yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch, and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all five loops on my hook. And then I'm going to half double crochet in each of the last 10 stitches. And that should bring me back around again to my stitch marker. Once back around at my stitch marker again, I'm going to begin round 18. For round 18, I'm going to briefly remove my stitch marker. I'm going to work one half double crochet two together over the next two stitches. I will remark that stitch. I'll half cr double crochet in the next 10 stitches. Nine, 10, and half double crochet two together over the next two stitches and complete the round by half double crocheting in each of the next nine stitches until you return once again to your stitch marker. Once you return to your stitch marker you're going to begin round 19. For round 19 you will half double crochet two together over the next two stitches. Remember to mark your stitch. And then you're going to half double crochet in each of the next nine. One, two, three, four, five, nine half double crochet stitches you're going to half double crochet two together over the next two stitches and then you will half double crochet in the remaining eight I 
at your stitch marker you're going to begin round 20 you will half double crochet two together over the next two stitches you will then half double crochet in each of the next eight stitches You will half double crochet two together over the next two stitches and then half double crochet in the remaining seven stitches. Once again, add your stitch marker. To work your final round, round 21, you will half double crochet two together over those first two stitches. Half double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. Half double crochet two together and then half double crochet in the remaining six stitches. When you have come back around again to your stitch marker, you can remove your stitch marker and join with a slip stitch in that first stitch and then fasten off and again you are going to leave a long tail and fasten off your work. So now this is what your mitten should look like. I'll pull it back here just a little bit for you. This is what your mitten now looks like. To sew the top of your mitten closed, what you're going to do is once again turn your mitten inside out and pull your long tail through. Thread it through your yarn needle and then you are simply going to sew, once you get it through your needle, uh, sew the top of your mitten closed. To sew the top of my mitten closed, what I did was I just made sure that I knew where the end of my mitten was by my thumb hole, and I laid it flat, and then I simply just did a quick uh, stitch through both thicknesses of my mitten. and I sewed the top of the opening closed. And I went over it a couple times again. I didn't want my mitten top to open. You can be a little bit more careful <laughs> when you sew the top of yours closed. I'm just doing mine quickly here. I came back to the end. I just fastened it off again, kind of made a little bit of a knot there because I didn't want it to risk coming undone. And then I wove my ear needle through a little bit. the extra long end. Turn your mitten back right side out. And there you have it. The first of your 
cozy little tea mittens. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go back and repeat the steps outlined in this video and you're going to make your second mitten and it's done exactly the same way. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial on how to make the cozy latte mittens. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a like. I like to update the channel weekly with new patterns and tutorials. Also, please check out my Facebook page and my blog, richtexturescrochet.com, where you will find the full written instructions for this pattern and for many others. Thank you so much. <laughs>